YouTube battle community, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard fans, random people on the internet, my name is Giggins and we're here today to talk about King Gizzard's 18th studio album, Butterfly 3000. And I absolutely adore this album and I just want to read off the sticker first because this is what really caught my eye about it. Psychedelic, melodic, prismatic, there's a name for you or a word for you. Butterfly is certainly the sextet's most beautiful work yet. Every splash of paint is exactly where it's supposed to be. Every brush stroke considered. King Giz right in on their yellow-bellied brown snake. Catch some smoke and slither off to the foot of the rainbow to work on their next opus. Does Butterfly 3000 sound like a 50-year-old relic or 50 years ahead of its time? It doesn't matter. This is a Giz record that folks will listen to in 3,000 years. Available in red, blue, or yellow vinyl. And I picked it up because of that sticker and because I've heard people talking about it. I've known about Giz for a long time, probably six or seven years or however long they've been around for. Actually, this one, they've been around for 10 years maybe, but I've heard their music on and off over the years and I've always enjoyed it, but I've never like dove deep into their discography before. And this is the first album I physically owned by them. And I am so happy about that because this album is freaking fantastic. I adore the synthy, phaser-ish vibe on this thing. It reminds me of early Tame Impala, like Lonerism, Inner Speaker, Tame Impala, and the album Wildflowers by the Avalanches. For me, if you combine all of that together, you kind of get an amalgamation of what this is. Um, I've been playing this album nonstop since I picked it up. It came out in vinyl, I think a month ago, or maybe in August of 2021. And I've been playing it nonstop since then. And I thought, man, I got to do a review of this thing because it's so good. And there's a rumor that there's 3000 butterflies on this cover. So I'll let you pause the video. You can start counting, but here's the inner sleeve or the, the gatefold rather. Very cool pictures of the guys. Here's the back cover and the spine. So like I said, this thing is available in three colors, red, blue, and yellow. I grabbed the yellow one. And uh, this is their, I believe it's their first album released on KGLW Records after they've left Fearless. But it opens up with a track called Yours. And we begin instantly in that dreamy, bouncy bass and synth energy. Um, it's just a driven little jammer. I love the light falsetto vocals that gently fall over the music. The acoustic guitar that comes in is fantastic because there's like almost no echo on the acoustic guitar, whereas there is echo on the voices and some of the other instruments. So when the acoustic comes in, it gives it this real stark contrast, which I, I find fascinating, but really hopeful vibe on this one. I think it's a great way to open the album. Just a fun little track. And then Shanghai is the second song on here. Again, one of my absolute favorites on the album. I adore this track. It literally sounds like a butterfly emerging for the first time and discovering this fantastic new world and flying through it. And you kind of go on this adventure with it as it's discovering its wings. Um, the, the way the vocals follow that synth is so effective and catchy. I mean, it's such a hook. It was a random hair flying through the room. Um, and again, with this one, they do more of the acoustic guitar stuff on top of the synths, which is such an effective use of two instruments talking to each other because one is super electronic, one's very organic and, you know, made and only sound comes out if a human makes it. So, well, I guess humans have to, never mind. It's a cool sounding song. Um, and the groove at the ending, the way it just kind of like flows out at the end is so fun. Love that. Track three on here is called Dreams, and this is more of an upbeat one. And I love how the synths kind of bubble up and down throughout this track. And the whole album is very synth heavy, which I like. And I, I really enjoy the vocal presentation and the way they construct the songs using that synth as the main instrument. They use it in such a warm way that it doesn't sound foreign or like it's, it doesn't sound like a robot at all. It sounds very comforting and, and almost like you're playing an acoustic guitar, but done through a synth. Um, I really like the drums throughout this one and I like the lyrics of it too because it's about dreams and like sometimes dreams are your best place to go. Like if you're having anxiety, you know, sleeping and having a fun dream could be like a really good kind of breath of fresh air. So I mean, I understand that whole sleeping for fun kind of thing. Um, the bell work on the cymbals, fantastic. The atmosphere 
kind of gives it that off the ground feeling. It's like a psychedelic lullaby. Great song. Blue Morpho emerges out of the end of dreams and adds a little bit of tension. So it's almost like you woke up from that fantastic dream to enter real life again. But um, after those three peaceful songs, it's nice to have a song with a little bit more texture to it, but sort of a biting, stabbing synth sound on this one, a more great cymbal work as well, but it reminds me more of Tame Impala. This sounds like something that they would have totally done back in the day, especially with that falsetto on top of it all, um, that really gentle vocal. It's not, I guess it's not truly a falsetto, but, you know, singing in a higher pitch very lightly, um, but I'm a sucker for that. It just sounds so cool. And then Interior People comes up, and you get some harpsichord on this one, which is great. But the way the piano kind of jumps in on the beat once in a while, love that. This is the most pop song on the album so far. This is definitely, like, you know, single-worthy, if you will. Um, it continues more of that dry acoustic guitar on top of the echoey synthy stuff. Um, but, you know, a little bit less of it. It's more of a sprinkling to kind of remind you you're still playing the same album. But the chorus is so well-written and syncopated. It's just something that kind of sticks in your head. Great track. Catching Smoke uh, is one of my favorite songs on this album. Slightly dizzying synth work on it, but the hammering drums are really cool. And it's one of those songs that can change at the drop of a hat. And da -da 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 -da, it, like, it just comes out of nowhere. It's so fun to sing along with. And for a group that's written 18 albums, it's amazing they can still come up with hooks at this point that they haven't done yet. Uh, very cool, but very cheery vibe on this one. Very upbeat. It's just a great cool little song one of my favorites on the album 202 killer year everything's coming up beach boys uh i love this quirky little jammer i know for some people as i've read online they're a little bit mm, about it but i think it's cool um excellent use of old school sounding synths on this one and i'm not a sniff a, a sniff synth aficionado by any stretch of the imagination so i'm not sure of all the actual terms for this stuff but phaser is that a is that a phaser I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but it sounds like a very summery kind of song. And not just for the Beach Boys reference, but just for me, it sounds like a sunny day. Cool production on this one. Black Hot Soup. Um, probably my least favorite song on the album, but still good. It's hypnotic enough that it sucks you in with its repetition. But um, really cheery vocal delivery on this one. Not much to say beyond that. It does kind of have a, like I said, a repetition to it. But um, yeah, it's cool. You Love, the last two songs on the album for me really bring it home. Uh, this one, it just sounds like it's from some other space and time. It's from a different dimension. Um, and it reminds me of the first couple of songs on the first side. So you kind of come back full circle to the original feeling. But it sounds like a cloud that ate a magic mushroom and then spent the afternoon looking for its own shadow. Uh, I don't know why that's like my thought process with that song, but that's definitely what I feel when I listen to it. It just sounds so psychedelic from a different realm that like we'll never understand this song's emotions more than a surface level. So it's just a fun song. They really know how to nail that fun feeling without making it sound cheesy or passe or cliche. Um, again, it's an amazing it's an amazing feat to be able to write a album or an album, let alone 18 of them and still have something left to say. And then you end the album with the title track, Butterfly 3000, which is a classic to close off this record. And it's this synth drenched dreamscape. It's a beautiful world, all of its own. It's short, but it's concentrated and it combines all the best elements of the album that you've been listening to into one little package, which I think is a cool way to close this thing. And let me show you the, uh, the record itself. So the inner sleeve has the lyrics, which is handy. So you can sing along to all your favorite Butterfly 3000 tracks. And here's the record. The record on bright yellow vinyl. I almost grabbed the red one, but I went with yellow instead because I don't have too many yellow records and it just looks fantastic and it matches the cover really well for me for what my eyes see anyway. Yeah, um, is there an inner sleeve? No, there's no booklet or anything inside there. As far as this goes, this is easily one of my favorite albums of 2021, hands down. If you're into psychedelic music and you enjoy something chill, but that's it's still got a lot, a lot to say, this album is for you. If you like early Tam Impala, this is definitely for you. 
if you're into like dream pop or um, definitely synthy kind of stuff, give this a try as well. It's just a fantastic album. Easily a 9 out of 10 for me. I think it's one of the best things I've heard in a long time. And I don't use that I don't use that phrase loosely. Oh, I just realized the butterflies are the color of the record you can get. So there's yellow, blue, and red. Look at that. Well, I counted three, so there's 2,997 more to go. But yeah, fantastic record. Pick it up, play it on Spotify, do what you gotta do to find it. But highly, highly recommended. Nine out of ten. My name is Giggins. This has been Butterfly 3000 by King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Let me know what you guys think about this thing in the comment section below. We'll talk about it. We'll chat about it. And um, beyond that, I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.